Everything seems to be cratering right now, but what does that mean for housing? I'll be going over that in today's housing market update coming up right now. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm Rick Harrison with MVP Realty in Southwest Florida. And on this channel, I bring you the latest market news so you can make better decisions when it comes to buying, selling, and investing in Southwest Florida real estate. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you don't miss out on the latest data, tips, and news keeping you ahead of the market trends. This week, we see a lot of headlines about crashing, cratering, and falling with some minor rises throughout not only the economy, but the housing market as well. So I've got some pretty ominous stories ahead today, but first let's quickly look at the changes here in our local market of Southwest Florida. All right, so let's get into the uh, market update, the market stats update for the north and south part of Southwest Florida. Um, I'm gonna start off with the southern part of Southwest Florida, which is from Cape Coral down to Naples and, Naples and Markle Island. Uh, last week, we went from new listings at 689 to new listings this week at 786. That is up 14%. So that's a huge change this week, uh, week over week, um, you know, adding an additional almost 100 new listings. Despite that, we are starting to see a slowdown in new listings, and you'll see that coming up in the inventory breakdown next. Uh, Sold is 499 last week to 576 this week. That's up 15%. Um, again, that's a lagging indicator of what happened 30 to 45 days ago. So that was the market then. And then the market now is the pendings that went from 746 this week up to 772 this week. Um, so that's up 3%. And that is also an indication of what's going on with mortgage rates right now, which have been hovering around the low 5% uh, range. Again, um, as we've been seeing with the trends, price decreases still not at our all time highs, which were around 900. But we went from 702 last week to 738 this week. That's up 5%. With the inventory breakdown, single family homes um, went from 4929 last week to 4994 this week. That's up 65. So we did have a pretty good size gain there. Condos, on the other hand, went from 20, uh, 2145 to 2153. So that was really only up eight. Um, but still an overall increase week over week. The net gain from 27 last week to 73 this week. So we're still gaining more, um, more inventory on the market that's going off. Multifamilies went from 190 to 187. That's down three. Still hovering around all-time highs for multifamilies on the market. And then foreclosures, we did see an uptick this week, up eight. So that is uh, one of the more sizable upticks in foreclosures. Um, as I've been saying for several months now, I think we will start to see more foreclosures coming on the market, um, especially now that, uh, well, now that for the most part, uh, just consumers in general have been really racking up their credit card debt and we've run out of our savings. So I think we will continue to see that start to increase. Uh, we're going to start to see the effects of the uh, what happened over the last two years. Uh, moving into the northern part of Southwest Florida, Punta Gorda, all the way up to Sarasota. We had the new listings go from 1818 last week down to 1772 this week. That's only down 3%, but still it is a decrease. Um, and then solds, which is, again, a lagging indicator, went from 1372 to 1549. So, again, this is, you know, what happened over a, over a month ago, uh, up to up to two months ago. Going up 13%, that was what was going on when we saw the mortgage rates start to um, subside a bit. And uh, some, at one point they had spiked and then they started to subside a bit. And I believe that is what we're seeing in these uh, charts now. Pendings, 1932 last week up to 2006 this week. That is up 4%. Um, not a huge amount, but still up, you know, about 70 new, um, new offers and new um, listings going off market under contract. Price decreases went from 22.98 to 23.77. That was up 3%. Um, still, you know, we're, we're not seeing a huge shift in the price decreases. However, over time, we have seen a pretty large shift um, in those price decreases. Inventory for the northern part 41.14 for single families last week, 40.85 this week. That's down 29. And condos went from 14.05 to 13.97. That's down eight. So, we had a net gain of 97 last week. We actually had a net loss of 37 in the northern part of, of Southwest Florida. Uh, again, it's been a pretty heavily uh, inundated market from that in that area. A lot of investors have been going into that market. 
um, and a lot of people have been moving there. So that is uh, that's really what we're seeing here is the, the losses are outweighing the uh, new listing inventory coming on. Last week for multifamilies, we had 73. That's up to 78. Not much of a gain, but still a gain of five. And then foreclosures really didn't change much, up one to 33 from 32 last week. Um, on to the interest rates. So these are interest rates as of today. Comparing uh, last week, 5.196 to 5.118. That is uh, down slightly, not much, but still still down uh, 0.07%. And then bank rate had it going from 5.53 last week to 5.47. So again, another decrease, but we're still hovering right in the low to mid five percentage range uh, for the interest rates. Um, next, we're going to go on to the headline highlights. This is kind of the layout and the breakdown of today's um, stories. They are going to be short and sweet. I have been getting a little bit lengthy in my uh, my last few videos, and I want to try to keep them short for you guys so you get the most out of them. Uh, but we will start with the first one, which is the federal funds rate versus the 10-year yield. I've had this question come up quite a few times recently. Um, even some clients have been asking me about it. So what's the deal with the fact that the uh, the Federal Reserve has raised the interest rates again but now we're seeing, or we have been seeing the mortgage rates actually go down. And what I've been trying to tell everyone um, for the last really couple months um, is that the, the federal funds and what the Federal Reserve does to rates has nothing to do with the mortgage rates. I mean, it has, you know, it has a, a correlation, but it's usually actually uh, a reverse correlation. So the Fed really is reacting to what's going on in the bond market. Uh, the bond market is a lot larger than the stock market. It's hundreds of times bigger. Um, there's a lot more money involved in the bond market and it's a slow moving market. So it really doesn't or shouldn't increase too much drastically in a very short period of time. However, as you can see, this chart is showing the rates. Um, I'm going to actually remove myself here again. It goes all the way back into the 1970s. So really right around uh, 1980, 1979, this chart shows all the way up through the present day. And what you can see, the blue line at the top is the federal funds effective rate. So that's what the, the Federal Reserve does. They uh, raise the interest rates. That's what that blue line is. The, the red line below it is the 10-year real interest rate. So this is uh, this is really correlated to the 10-year bond. Um, as the 10-year the interest rate goes down, the federal fund rate starts to go down too, especially when you start to look in around 2012. The red line starts to go up first, and then you see a lagging where the federal funds start to increase later on around 2017. So again, the 10-year bond is the red line. When that starts to increase right around 2003, you can see that that starts to increase first. And then after that, the federal funds start to rise. That's because the, the Federal Reserve began to raise the interest rates. They raised it, and then all of a sudden, the bond market started to go down. Then again, back in 2012 into 2013, the bond market went negative and, and then it started to increase a little bit, stayed pretty steady up until about 2016 and 17. Then the bond market started to rise first. Federal funds started to chase it until about 2019 when the uh, bond market started to subside again and go negative. And then the federal funds rate came afterwards. So this this chart and as you can see now that we're up to present day in 2022 the uh, bond market in red went up first and then the federal reserve chased it with their interest rates now rising above but still behind the actual timeline of the 10-year bond so the federal reserve is chasing the bond market so that's why i keep telling everyone if you're if you want to know what's going to happen to mortgage rates just look at the 10-year bond because that's going to be the leading indicator as the bond market goes up, the um, the Federal Reserve will start to rise their rates, but the bond market is usually somewhere around, and it's not exact, but around two and a half percentage points below mortgage rates. So take whatever on whatever's on the chart in the stock, uh, stock exchange, take the 10-year bond and look at what its percentage rate is. So if, it, if it's around 3%, add about two and a half percentage to that, and that's where um, the mortgages should be. Now, like, again, it's not exact, but uh, it should be somewhere close. And wherever the bond market moves, so if the bond market starts to move up, you will see that mortgage rates rise. If the bond market starts to fall, you will start to see the uh, mortgage rates fall. So really, the, the Fed is usually chasing that. And that's why the Federal Reserve can raise interest rates and spike them up, you know, 0.75 basis points, uh, sorry, 75 basis points 
or even a full percentage point, and you can still see the mortgage rates head down because they're actually, you know, they're following the bond market. All right, let's move on to the actual stories for today. Uh, the first one is builder confidence. This comes right out of the um, Florida Realtors um, Association. Builder confidence now is in negative territory. If you remember back in January and February, the uh, the builder confidence was at a 98, which is almost 100%. Uh, so it's a 98 percentage points. And it has slowly started to decline over time. But now that we're starting to get into, you know, what looks more to be like a recession every day, um, we're starting to see that the optimism of the builder's confidence has started to turn into pessimism. So um, it's the first negative reading since May of 2020. And we all remember what happened in May of 2020 and why builder confidence was fall so dr drastically after everybody was shut in and locked down. Um, the housing market index, based on a score of 100, any number above 50 indicates more optimism than pessimism, while any number below 50 suggests negative outlooks. Um, in August, the index fell from 49 to 55 in July, the first time since 2020. Um, growth in construction costs and higher mortgage rates continue to weaken the market sentiment for single-family home builders, says NAHB Chairman Jerry Con uh, Conter. And in a troubling sign that consumers are now sitting on the sidelines due to higher housing costs, the August buyer traffic number in the builder survey was 32, the lowest level since April of 2014. So if you think back to 2014, we were still just coming out of the, the great financial um, crash, really. And 2012 was when really home prices hit an all-time low. At that point, we had a huge amount of inventory. So there was a ton of inventory on the market already. So at that point in time, builders really didn't, you know, people weren't really looking to buy new construction right away because there was already so much cheap inventory on the market that they didn't really need it. Um, so that's really what's going on right now. And we're seeing those levels come back to all time lows um, really in housing. So I think that's a pretty good indicator of what's going on in the market, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, moving on to the zero hedge. Uh, Housing starts crater in July as the bottom falls out of the market. Uh, surging layoffs, this is something we've been talking about in the real estate market, but also are starting to happen in the tech sectors as well as other parts, uh, other industries and other uh, sectors of the markets. Soaring mortgage rates and plunging mortgage applications, which have been happening for a couple months now. Housing starts crashed to uh, crash 9.6% month over month and permits plunge 3.3 month over month. So. Uh, just to kind of put that graph in a little bit better perspective, um, as you can see, we have had some pretty large declines and decreases in starts and um, and permits over time, especially if you go back into 2020, which where you can see these two largest bars that is right at the beginning of, uh, you know, this two year um, two year stint that we've been on. So when that when we all were shut down and shut in. Um, housing permits and starts obviously plummeted to all-time lows. Um, but ever since then, you can see we've actually had some pretty good recoveries, especially right after, immediately after that, uh, when we started to recover a bit. And um, all the way through until more recently, uh, the housing starts have gone down 9.6 uh, 9 month over month. Um, from Redfin, newly listed homes fall most since 2020. Um, as sellers pull back. So new listings are down 12% from a year ago. So just put that in perspective from a year ago. Um, but uh, the overall housing supply is on the rise still. It's And that's more of a sign in this case that buyers are pulling back than more than sellers are. So um, the, despite the decrease in new listings, overall housing supply continues to grow. It's a sign that home buyers are pulling back more than home sellers. The total number of homes for sale is up 4% year over year. So that's the good news for buyers who can afford to remain in the market because it means the housing shortage is easing and there are more homes to choose from. Uh, demand for lowest price homes is strongest as market rebalances. Um, competition is strongest for lowest price homes in each market, reversing a pandemic trend. And then price cuts are now most common for middle um, and high priced homes. So that goes without saying, you know, the markets have been looking for less expensive homes. Most of the people waiting on the, the uh, sidelines our first time home buyers and millennials who are looking for something that's a little bit more affordable, especially with the fact that they're coming off of all time highs in rents and rent increases. Uh, they're looking for something that's a little bit more affordable 
Um, but again, with that demand also means that there's more competition in that market. Um, so we're starting to see that play out as well. Uh, and then the final one is mortgage applications increase. So it's really a slight increase, 0.2% from a week earlier, uh, 4% for refinances though. And I don't think that's a good sign uh, because rates aren't coming down really. They've come down a bit, but I think the refinance really is an indicator of people really hurting for money. Um, I don't think it's something that they're doing out of the fact that you know money's cheap. I think they're doing that out of necessity in order to keep up with inflation, keep up with the prices and really start to pull some equity out so they have some extra cash um, around to, to get by. Um, finally, in the uh, really we'll go to the wall of worry for today and just talk about this real briefly. Unemployment is increasing still. There's more layoffs coming um, down the pipeline and have been announced in recent weeks. Two to 10 year bond, we're gonna have to keep an eye out on that with the Fed reversal um, and see if peak inflation is in fact actually happening. Also, earnings season and layoffs, again, uh, that's coming out right now. We are in earnings season, so we'll have to keep an eye on the stocks and how those earnings come out. China-Taiwan is becoming more of an issue in the news. Uh, war does look possible. Um, there have been several threats made by really both sides um, and some instigating on both sides as well. Uh, and then the other story that's really starting to really ramp up a bit is the is Chinese uh, the China's real estate debt crisis. So that the whole thing with Evergrande over a year ago is now starting to to cause a lot of concerns in there in uh, the Chinese economy, and I think that's only going to increase over time. So we'll have to see how all of that plays out. Going forward, keep an eye out on the bond market and inflation rates as we may see a reversal in the Fed's tightening after the next rate hike and what's to come with the tensions and military drills surrounding Taiwan. Well, that's it for this week. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button to let me know. And don't forget to check out the link in the description to get access to our MLS search engine and tons of free tools, resources, and hot lists. And if you ever want to connect or chat, my info is in the link as well. As always, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.